Cypress. Education beyond boundaries. Let's understand transaction monitoring. Financial institutions are required to conduct risk-based monitoring. In 2018, after a financial institution failed to conduct risk-based transaction monitoring, it was fined over $260 million by the U.S. government regulators. In order to fully comply with the BSA at ML Examination Manual, a financial institution must first, identify the higher-risk customers, second, conduct EDD on these higher-risk customers, and third is, monitor these higher-risk customers and their transactions more closely as long as their accounts are open. Transaction monitoring is a process of identifying inconsistent transactions which are not in line with customer's account, customer profile, and reporting them to the regulatory authority. With numerous transactions flowing in and out of the financial institutions globally, it is a very studious approach in performing due diligence and identifying the suspicious activity, unusual transactions which are indicative of money laundering, through various channels including transaction monitoring systems and manual interventions. How does it work? First, identify suspicious behavior at financial institution and end customer level. Second, increase automation. Minimize unnecessary alerts by tailoring scenarios to customer or transaction risk and focusing on regulatory priorities. Third, increase effectiveness over time. Tune rules without tech support. Fifth is, give regulators and banking partners confidence, tried and tested system with a clear audit trail of monitoring and investigations. And six is, implement quickly, easily and securely easy to implement. Transaction monitoring tools. Financial institutions uses automated transaction monitoring systems to make sure they are preventing ML. There are tools like Patriot Officer available to help achieve this objective. They tools are of two types. First is rule-based and second is behavior-based. How does it work? These are rule sets based filtering and alert system. The rules scenarios are created by financial institutions to detect suspicious money laundering activities. These are less efficient, as millions of rules are required to cover the entire scope of money laundering risk. Example, if a financial institution uses a rule-based approach to monitor the wire transfers to or from each country, the financial institution may have to create a lot of rules depending on the product type, customer type, etc. Behavior-based systems use changes of behavior to trigger alerts. A behavior change may happen in a fraud case committed by a third party. Example, stolen credit card, counterfeit check, etc. Because the victim and the fraudster are two different persons, and it is very likely that they behave differently. In reality, behavior-based systems have missed many true money laundering cases. That is, behavior-based systems have a large number of false negatives because money laundering can be conducted without any behavior change. Identify suspicious behavior at financial institution and end customer level. Through transaction monitoring, the financial institution can identify suspicious behavior patterns which can be potentially ML risk. Increase automation. The rule-based transaction monitoring systems Minimize unnecessary alerts by tailoring scenarios to customer or transaction risk and focusing on regulatory priorities. Increase effectiveness over time. These systems use advanced AI and ML capabilities and tune rules without tech support. Give regulators and banking partners confidence, tried and tested system with a clear audit trail of monitoring and investigations. Implement quickly, easily, and securely. These systems are easy to implement. Let's understand transaction analysis. Transaction analysis is performed on the transactions, which gets triggered due to the element of suspicion. Banking systems usually are equipped with currency thresholds and compliance rule sets that captures real-time transactions, patterns to identify suspicious customer behavior and avoid risks associated with it. Understanding and evaluating the transaction. Understand the underlying transaction and identify the activity which triggered the alert by looking at the below attributes. A alert types, B transaction value, date and type, C originator and beneficiary, etc. D or other fields in order to assist in reviewing the sequencing and patterns of transactions. Evaluate the transactions to identify the nature of the alerts and the patterns involved in the transactions in the case. 
For example, do the patterns of activity involve clustering of transactions in a short period of time that may not be indicative of commercially reasonable activity associated with the party's line of business? Let's understand. Transaction triggers, red flags. Red flag is a warning signal that should bring attention to a potentially suspicious situation activity. Potential red flags. Identity of an originator or beneficiary cannot be determined. The relationship between originator or beneficiary is not apparent from the transaction and cannot otherwise be determined. Material negative news on an originator or beneficiary. Originator or beneficiary is a politically exposed person, PEP, in a country, and the originator or beneficiary in another country is PEP, and both are in the same industry, occupation. Originator or beneficiary makes frequent or large dollar transactions and has no record of past or present employment, business revenues, or other documented source of wealth. The currency transaction patterns of a business show a sudden change inconsistent with normal activities. Transacting businesses share the same address provided on a registered agent's address or have other address inconsistencies. Frequent involvement of multiple jurisdictions or beneficiaries located higher-risk offshore financial centers. Let's understand suspicious activity. Regular or questionable customer behavior or activity that may be related to a money laundering or other criminal offense or to the financing of a terrorist activity may also refer to a transaction that is inconsistent with a customer's known legitimate business, personal activities, or the normal level of activity for that kind of business or account. Suspicious Activity Report SAR is a document that financial institutions must file with the local FIU, Financial Crimes Enforcement Network FinCENs, following a suspected incident of money laundering or fraud. These reports are required under the United States Bank Secrecy Act BSA of 1970. An SAR must be filed no later than 30 calendar days after the initial detection of facts that may constitute a basis for the filing. Financial institutions must keep copy of the SAR and the original or business record of any supporting documentation for five years. Federal law requires that a financial institution and its directors, officers, employees, and agents who report suspected or known criminal violations or suspicious activity may not notify any person involved in the transaction that the transaction has been reported. Let's understand who must report. Financial institutions are required by federal law to detect and report suspicious activity. Filing of SAR is not limited to banks but also applies to a broker dealers, insurance companies, MSBs, futures commission merchant, mutual funds, casinos, casinos and card clubs licensed to do business as casinos or card clubs and which have gross annual gaming revenues gagger in excess of $1 or financial institutions subject to the requirements of the Bank Secrecy Act, which is known as Title 31. Let's understand importance of reporting. Reporting of suspicious activity by financial institutions is crucial to the battle against money laundering, terrorist financing, and other financial crimes. Suspicious activity reported by financial institutions is used by law enforcement to first is identify potential and actual illegal activity. Second is detect stand prevent flow of illicit funds. Third is initiate or appalment investigations. And fourth is identify emerging trends and patterns in crimes. Let's understand reportable activity. Reportable activity includes actual and attempted suspicious activity. A suspicious activity is subjective, when in doubt activity should be reported. A suspicious activity that does not meet SAR filing dollar thresholds may still be reported. Reportable activity includes transactions involving funds derived from illegal activities, intended or conducted in order to hide or disguise funds or assets derived from illegal activities, designed to evade any regulations promulgated under Bank Secrecy Act. Having no business or apparent lawful purpose or activity is not consistent with the sort in which the particular customer would normally be expected to engage, and the financial institution knows of no reasonable explanation for the transaction after examining the available facts, including the background and purpose of the transaction. Now, let's understand red flags. Now, let's look at some of the red flags which may trigger a reporting. These are, first is, banks customer. Second is identity theft. 
Third is banks transactions and fourth is intention trade. Customer Identification Program, SIP, and Know Your Customer, KIC. Red flags of suspicious activity may be observed at account opening or at any time during the course of a banking relationship. Account holder whose permanent address is a post office box or commercial mail receiving agency, such as Mailboxes Inc. Account holder whose information at account opening appears inconsistent or does not make sense. Account whose nature is not an appropriate account type. Example. Financial institution clearing account with an introduction by broker-dealer. Unwillingness to respond to questions about transactions or account. Documents provided for identification appearing altered or forged or application appearing forged, altered, destroyed, and reassembled. A person opening account unable to supply identifying information when told the application is incomplete. A personal information inconsistent with information already on file at financial institution or creditor. ID photo inconsistent with customer appearance or LD information inconsistent with information provided. Information on ID, such as signature, inconsistent with information on file at financial institution. Account holder whose actual account activity is inconsistent with expected activity from the CIP, KYC profile information for the account. Individually, these behavior red flags may seem obvious, but when identified as occurring together, they may be representative of identity fraud or theft. Account holder whose permanent address is a post office box or commercial mail receiving agency, such as mailboxes. Notice of a credit freeze in response to a request for a consumer credit report or fraud alert included with a consumer credit report. Consumer Reporting Agency provides notice of address discrepancy. Unusual credit activity, such as an increased number of accounts or inquires. Information on ID not matching any address in the Consumer Report, Social Security Number, SSN, has not been issued or appears on the death records. ID Number, SSN, ADHAR, provided matches another person opening an account or other customers. Address or phone number matching that's supplied by a large number of applicants or existing customers. Most of the available credit used for cash advances, jewelry, or electronics, plus customer fails to make first payment. Drastic change in payment patterns, use of available credit or spending patterns. Account that has been inactive for a lengthy time suddenly exhibiting unusual activity. Mail sent to customer repeatedly returned as undeliverable despite ongoing transactions on active account. Monitoring and investigation responses are used by banks to address the red flag transactions highlighted below. Commercial accounts where deposits and withdrawals are predominantly cash rather than debits and credits normally associated with commercial operations example checks, letters of credit, bills of exchange. Commercial accounts whose transactions both purchases and sales are frequent and do not make economic sense. Example, lack of concern for transaction costs. Customer or group tries to persuade a bank employee not to file required reports or maintain required records. Fund transfers are sent or received from the same person to or from different accounts. Customers provide payment with traveler's checks, foreign currency drafts or other negotiable instruments, particularly in commercial accounts. Purchase payments, incoming funds or loan repayments, where wired funds come from banks, countries where the company or individual is not known to conduct business. Large Value Automated Clearing House H, Transactions are frequently initiated via third-party service providers by originators that are not bank customers and for which bank has no or insufficient due diligence. Customers that use letters of credit and other methods of trade finance to move money between countries where such trade is not consistent with the account's usual behavior or where the customer is not known to have suppliers or sales. Credit card transactions for online gaming companies. Trade finance activities require active involvement of multiple parties on both sides of the transaction and the process of due diligence may be challenging. Trade finance is more document-based than other areas of banking and can be susceptible to documentary fraud. 
customer requests an unusual degree of confidentiality or deviation from established process. Approach from previously unknown party whose identity is not clear, who appears evasive about identity connections or whose references are not convincing. Bill of lading describing customized cargo, but without container numbers or with sequential numbers. Invoice showing miscellaneous, handing charges greater than 40% of total invoice value. Letter of credit, LC, that includes a condition for a switch bill of lading. The cargo weights from bills of lading that appear inconsistent with material being shipped. Unusual codes, markings or stamps appearing on monetary instruments, such as drafts or bills of exchange. Collection or LC covering shipment of prepaid phone cards or other stored value cards with high foreign currency denominations. Changing LC beneficiary name and address just before payment is to be made including requests for assignment of proceeds or transfer when the documents are presented. Commercial LC that allow payment to be requested from paying bank by a beneficiary in same country without presentation of documents sent directly to issuing bank. Shipment locations or description of goods not consistent with LC.